Hi, my name is Duda Penteado and I am a fine artist. More than 10 years ago, I worked with this art dealer, Sam Simpson Gallery downtown, and we were very connected to the 111 building. Uh, there was a lot of underground and greater art, art activity happening there and that was the Art Fox movement. I was one of the late, late, maybe the last guy who joined then a little bit after the movement died out. I was sort of a co-founder of uh, uh, Hope Center Art Program, which is a sort of a faith-based institution there who has this very beautiful classes for children and in dance, arts, and I, I was there for a few years. I direct the program. How I end up in Jersey, right? You know, I always tell people, once you move to Jersey City, you can never get out, you know. There's something about Jersey City, you know, you get stuck in here. But uh, the, my story is a simple one. Uh, I met my wife, uh, she's also Brazilian background, in New York, SOBs, which was a, a bar who played Brazilian music, and she lived here. We got married and I moved to Jersey City. So, uh, once again, Jersey City is in this, is, is in a very comfortable place. I always tell this story, you know, when people say, well, you leave Jersey City, oh, you're talking about New Jersey, and no, Jersey City is not the state of New Jersey, okay? It's like talking about Manhattan, the state of New York, Jersey City is a city, but reality is Jersey City is so well located. Jersey City is charming, you know, and it's been charming when it was more an underground city, because it was much more an underground art movement, now hopefully we can still keep all the underground thing mixed up. I think the power is there, you know, the, this diversity. My story is simple, then I start meeting people and fall in love for really the underground movement. It was so close to, to, to New York and uh, I could find more affordable places to do my studio. I had several studios in many different places uh, in Jersey City and um, I'm still here. In 2008 was my solo exhibition. Um, it was an installation and a ground floor and it was called Beautiful Ashes. And it was really uh, an installation uh, the act aftermath of 9-11. As you know, Jersey City had a very important mission with 9-11. All the buildings when 9-11 happened, all the buildings at the waterfront was used for uh, cargo and, and things they sent here to go across the river to help Manhattan, and which I call the most beautiful, tragic view. Because when it happened, I was actually on top of one building right next to uh, uh, the 111 downtown. I was at the Morgan building, I had my studio there. When the 9-11 started happening, my wife called me and said, Listen, a uh, 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 plane just hit one tower, went all the way to the roof of the building. So I saw the second tower being hit. With, with the most clear view, it was very intense. Uh, from there, we could see a lot of movement in the city of Jersey City happening. After 9-11, we, we can see how Jersey City start being targeted or, or look at it from the Manhattan view, a very possible place to move in. So that's one of the critical moments out of this, this ashes, my, my, my artwork. I, I took the, the Guernica of Picasso, the, the famous painting, and, and I did one about 9-11. And I purposely wanted to make that connection about historical references, right? How I have short memory, you know, and, and, and how somehow mankind has this, this powerful way to, to reinvent war. So it was a difficult artwork and intense. I published a book. After that, we did an exhibition in New York, but then I kept, every year they interview me. I had access to few pieces of the World Trade Center, and I did few memorials. Jersey City got few big pieces from uh, the foundation because we were a city who were uh, very, very helpful in the process. So uh, later on, I had access to those pieces, and obviously nobody wants to sell that. So we create memorials to make people think about all those things. I decided 
uh, that it was important to create a project who that will, will bring a group of students of the post the generation post 9/11, and that's when I, you know, was at the same time was invited to do my exhibition at the Jersey Museum and said I want to create this installation with this collective thinking. I was given the key of the city when the mayor Glenn Cunningham was in office. We did a beautiful uh, uh, exhibition um, where I released my book and we released it at the um, uh, Lowe's Theater. The Lowe's Theater is one surviving place in two in Jersey City. Um, and we put art everywhere and it was music and it was the release of the book, it was a full program, so it was, it was very exciting. You know, the art and the culture is the soul of a city. Dr. Carlos Hernandez used to say in his writings, you always call that, it's the soul of the city. As an educator, he cast out this vision. But does the developer see that? The question about what culture is, it has to be seen in my point of view as an anthropological way. Because culture is how we eat, how we move, where we live, how we connect to things around you, people, educational institutions, food, different people with different backgrounds. Um, we have to understand in the culture of Jersey City, we have more than 50 languages spoken in the city. It's amazing. For 250,000, it's amazing. The melting pot, if we want to think about American melting pot, here's a great example. The culture exchange of the possibility of eating foods and you know creating projects or even your neighbor who they are where they come from is very rich so, so culture in, in a basic way is how we manifest ourselves right where we go how we what kind of transportation we take i mean do we like bikes does everybody ride in a bike or everybody takes bus or subway you know understanding all those things is to me the true manifestation of a culture of a city the important thing here, the element is, as we, we understand this web of culture that Jersey City is, understand this 50 language spoken and this variety of people and, 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 and colors and languages, where are our artistic institutions that allow the manifestation of the culture be, be projected? And that's the part that we need to continue to look at it. Art is uh, a complicated because there's questions what to do and how to survive and how to be part of uh, the fabric of society. And there's so many answers to that. The question is why people are making art in the caves? See, there are fundamental things about the human race, which is we question ourselves. That's where philosophy fundamentals comes from. When we think about where are we come from? Why are we here? Why do I have to do with all of this? And there is a God, there is a creator, or there is not. Um, and this uh, is this idea of making things and beauty. And we are the only species who registers ourselves, our history, like no other animal on earth. That was a very spiritual ritual. Then it touched the very essence of the human experience. We can never take it. Whatever we go as a humankind, if we lose the soul, the connection to the artistic manifestation, we are gonna destroy ourselves. No matter if we're building more buildings, if we're inside of caves, and was there back then, and is here now. Once you remove the, the capability of mankind to dream, to manifest themselves, to articulate ourselves and share the experience, and through that allow the transformation, we are in great danger to ourselves. Jersey City is a powerful, beautiful place, but it needs to continue to harness places or caves where art and culture must continue.